Hello everybody, welcome back here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted to have you on board. So welcome to a series again here for the WSET Diploma Level 4. And we are here for uh, Spain, looking at Aragon as our uh, autonomous province in this session. Purely all just on Aragon, one standalone video. All right, so uh, we are going to talk about, really to begin with, the location of this province. Uh, and we are looking here sort of north to north east of Spain. Uh, we are bordered by um, France with the Pyrenees. We have Catalonia and also Valencia on its eastern side. Uh, Castilla-La Mancha to the south, Castilla y Leon, and then little bits, uh, a little bit of La Rioja and Navarra. Uh, so it's that area there. I have then uh, magnified that red area here on the right hand side. And you'll see that there are four principal wine regions in this autonomous community of Aragon. So Carinena, Campo de Borja, Calatayud are uh, in the west. There's like a nucleus of them in the west of Aragon. And that is really uh, on the Castilla Leon, La Rioja and Navarra borders. And that is relatively close to the city of Zaragoza. And then we have up here in the northeast, uh, which is in the foothills of the Pyrenees, uh, on the border of Catalonia, we have Somontano with a completely uh, different climatic effect. So that's going to be standalone. So in this presentation, we'll look at these three grouped together and then we'll deal with Somontano separately because, of course, it is quite different. So uh, a little bit of history here. The first thing to mention, if you have watched my video on Navarra, you will know there's a lot of close historical uh, links here between Aragon and Navarra. So a lot of the history is actually mirroring the likes of Navarra as it is next door. Uh, so we go from the early tribes being the uh, Celtiberians, the, the Iberians, the Vascones, and then eventually the Romans conquer this area in the second century BC. The Roman Western Empire collapses and then the Visigoths and Franks both ruled here for a few hundred years. Uh, the Moors were through here in 714 and by 935 AD, the Caliphate of Cordoba had extended all this way to, uh, the, um, uh, to Zaragoza. Now, in 1035, Aragon was a part of the Kingdom of Navarra when it was divided up. The picture here is a wonderful Moorish uh, castle that is the um, Aljafiera Palace in Zaragoza. OK, so <clears throat> a little bit more history to the Middle Ages. Now, um, the going into the early 12th century, Zaragoza was reclaimed by the Christians. And, and this whole area, Zaragoza, Aragon, uh, partnered with the Count of Barcelona, Ramon Berenger IV. Great and wonderful name. And that strengthened Aragon with this partnership. And in fact, the Aragonese became very able seamen. Now, we don't think of that as logic because, of course, they are not on the coast. But Aragonese fleets conquered Sicily at the end of the 13th century. Sardinia at the start of the 14th century and Napoli, Naples in 1442. The House of Barcelona ruled until 15th century. It helped orchestrate the partnership with Castile through an arranged marriage. And this is what we often call the ultimate alliance in 1469, the marriage of Ferdinand II of Aragon and then Isabella I of Castile and Reconquista. Okay, so a little bit here about the topography of Aragon. So in the north, we have the Pyrenees, the Pyrenees, which also has the Pico Dianetto, which is the highest peak in the Pyrenees as identified there. In the southern part of Aragon, we have the Sistema Iberico. And in the middle of it, we have Ebro River Valley Basin, as you'll see identified just there. That flows 
Uh, remember from the Cantabrian mountain range, then heads through uh, La Rioja, uh, partially through Navarra, and then comes through here uh, as it heads its way down towards the Mediterranean. Many uh, tributaries actually run into the Ebro, as you'll see from the network of rivers on that map. Geology here is that predominantly we find uh, sedimentary based soils of limestone and clay. And then certainly around rivers, we have some uh, colluvial type soils. We have some surface rocks, stones and pebbles in the area. So let's get into our DOs. First of all, uh, we're looking at the DO which sits towards the far west of the province and that is Kalatayud. So the DO here of only around three and a half thousand hectares, and it's situated in the foothills of the Sistema Iberico. It's a warm continental climate with hot, dry summers, as it is with all three of these DOs, so Campo de Boja, Carrenena, and Kalatayud. So the annual rainfall here tends to be somewhere around 450 to 500 millimetres per year. And the vineyards are generally located on higher altitude plateaus and slopes, which do somewhat moderate the daytime temperatures. Uh, you'll see that um, the altitude here is around 500 to 1000 metres, which is, of course, fairly significant. The altitude is what gives the quite distinctly high diurnal range, which helps, of course, balance the grapes and the wines with higher acidities. Uh, from the north, we have the Chietho wind that comes through here that moderates the temperature and slows the ripening as well. The soil here, yes, it's clay, but we have a bit more sand in Calatayud and also a bit of slate on the slopes. North of that, uh, towards Navarra, we have the Dio of Campo de Borja. Uh, so Campo de Borja is about twice the size of Calatayud. It sits between the Ebro River, uh, which runs to its north, and the Sistema Ribérico, which of course runs at the south around Calatayud. Uh, the rainfall here is that it's drier, so around 350 to 450 millimetres per year. And really, this does translate into the wine style. Uh, you'll find typically the wines of Campo de Borja being a bit more powerful, less freshness in comparison to Calatayud, due to the altitudes being still high, but lower than Calatayud. Limestones and clays here, and of course, the Giato wind is still prominent in this area. Then we have the Carinena, which is the largest of our DOs. It's one of Spain's oldest wine regions, uh, and it accounts for around nearly 15,000 hectares of vines. Rainfall similar to that of Calatayud, uh, and altitude um, pretty similar to Campo de Borja, just a little bit on the higher end of the spectrum as well. Limestone, slate and clay here too, and the Chieta wind again. Also worth mentioning that uh, King Ferdinand I put wines of Garinena on the list of preferred supplies for a trip to Nice, as one does. Um, so we've done those three DOs, Galatayud, Garinena, Campo de Borja. These three DOs then, what do they share as a commonality? So they all mainly produce red wines, with each having substantial plantations of old vine garnacha, which of course is the principal grape variety. Worth mentioning, Garanena, of course, is the name of a grape variety. It's the name of a wine region here, but it's not the major grape of that wine region. Garnacha is the major grape variety. A lack of rainfall here, we said it's on the slightly lower side across most of these DOs, specifically Campo de Borja, and the rocky free draining soils that mean generally we have vineyards that are bush vines planted at low densities, of course, to benefit with larger, more extensive root systems to capture nutrients and water. Uh, so the dry and windy conditions also mean that pests and diseases, diseases are rarely problematic, but spring frosts can be a problem here. 
Um, now, this area is actually uh, dominated by cooperatives because uh, as of very typical in Spain, you have generally vineyard holdings being very small. And also here, the number of estate or bodegas, wineries being very low. So cooperatives do dominate. Uh, you'll see that the, here is the bodegas borsal, which are a very large cooperative. The majority of production are, is high volume, inexpensive red wine for early drinking. They tend to be fermented at moderate temperatures in stainless steel and bottled soon thereafter. The wines are generally medium to full bodied with high alcohols, medium tannins and a mixture of red and black fruits. Uh, but of course, it's not just a one trick pony. A handful of small quality focused wineries are making very, very impressive wines from old vine Garnacha, and it's helping to transform the image of these three DOs. Now, the producers will generally aim to showcase the quality of their fruit from vines and, of course, even vying for quite premium examples from these very old vine Garnacha. The time in oak tends to be still relatively limited or with very old oak uh, and you tend to find that the wines are much more expressive about the grape variety and place. Look out for concentrated raspberry like chambord, plum fruit and then sub subtle sort of spicy notes. The alcohol always gives it a lift of white pepper and clove and then you'll get that little bit of um, a subtle sort of cedar characteristic from the oak. Medium plus acid medium plus tannin, high alcohol, and they're usually medium to premium price. The picture there is of Norrell Robertson, MW Master of Wine, from his El Escorches Valente in D.O. Galatayud. Okay, so um, the final D.O. of Aragon is going far to the north. Aragon's most northerly, and that is Somontano D.O. So it's set apart geographically. It's located in the foothills of the Pyrenees, which, of course, runs through the northern part of this area. Uh, it should say up there 4,000 hectares. There's a zero missing. Make sure that you make a note about that. It's a warm continental climate here, but rainfall is slightly higher the, than the places like Garenena, Cabo de Boja, and Calatayud, and it's more evenly spread across the year. Uh, the vineyards are found at sort of uh, 350 to about 700 meters, but there are some outliers up towards a thousand. And the highest vineyards here uh, are really lowering the daytime temperatures and giving a larger diurnal range. We get cold breezes from the Chieto wind and also the Pyrenees. So this really gives you a more balanced climate, hence why we have a very diverse pie chart when it comes to the grape varieties. So we find that Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot uh, are pretty much about half of the plantations here. And of course, that's quite commonplace with the northern Spanish regions with their proximity sharing a border with France. Then we have Chardonnay, the most planted white grape variety, some excellent expressions and actually some very sort of delicate saline expressions from those at high altitudes. And unusual for Spanish region as well, fairly significant amount of Gewürztraminer uh, planted here, uh, almost level pegging with, of course, Tempranillo, which tends to dominate most regions. A bit of Syrah, Garnacha Tinta, and a bunch of others like Macabeo, uh, Garnacha Blanca, and so on. So quite a diverse and quite an exciting area for grapes. Really worth seeking out. What about the business here then? Well, it's been important to note that it's an area that has, has really started to rise in recent times. Um, really, if you go about 40 years ago, there was only a handful of producers and now there are over 30. So there's been quite a lot, lot of external investment. The investment first came from a local bank, which created a modern high technology winery known as Vinas del Verro. 
That is the emblem there that I'll show you on the slide. It's the largest producer in the region, and since 2008, it's owned by Gonzales Bias of Jerez. So the, of course, Andalusian sherry focus producer. Barbadillo, also a sherry producer, is now a major share of another cooperative, uh, sorry, of the cooperative. And the major wines of Somontano tend to be mid-priced, good or very good, from the uh, great variety that they are made from. Um, so exciting time. Somontano has, of course, competition from places like Catalonia and other locations, but it's a, certainly a place worth seeking out. Okay, time to look closer at the autonomous region of Aragon identified in the white outline just there. We are going to show you the northern expanse of Aragon, which is the Pyrenees, dominated by the Pyrenees. Uh, and also within Aragon's borders is the Pico di Eneto, which is the highest peak within Aragon. In the southern section, it's dominated by the Sistema Riberico, covered in yellow there. And therefore, in the middle, we have a rather large valley dominated by the river running from the Cantabrian mountain range, which is the Ebro River, meandering its way to the Mediterranean and providing quite a lot of pebbly soils around limestones and clays. So we'll generally find a lot of the vineyards being towards the Ebro, but going into foothills like the Sistema Riberico. Let's focus on the Garnacha Dios, a group of three of them. First of all, the yellow outline there is the Dio of Calatayud. This is about three and a half thousand hectares in the Sistema Riberica foothills and lies at about 550 to 1040 meters. Then north of that, the Campo de Borja, going to more towards the Ebro River, uh, about double the size in hectareage, and it is close to the Ebro. 350 to 700 meters. And then the oldest, Dio Carinena, of about 14 and a half thousand hectares at about four to 800 meters. Now, not in that group, and far off to the northeast is Dio Somontano. This, of course, is much more towards the Pyrenees, going up to around 1,000 meters in altitude with about 4,000 hectares of vine, dominated by international varieties. About two thirds are Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Chardonnay in that slightly cooler area. There you go. Well, that brings me to the end of this video on Aragon. I hope you have found it useful for your diploma studies. Uh, if you are looking to, of course, get more exclusive access to videos uh, for your diploma studies, please do check out www.winewithjimmy.com com lots there including written questions multiple choice questions flashcards map exercises lots and lots on our very high functioning portal and uh, once again any comments please comment in the in the section below it'd be great to hear from you and if you do find yourself in the uk come and see me at one of my establishments for a class a glass or a bottle most likely i've been jimmy thank you very much bye bye